Hey, hi everyone. This is Vivek, and welcome to another episode of Lead Code Weekly. So today, today we're going to talk about this problem called count array pairs divisible by k problem, which was the last problem of the last Lead Code Weekly. And this problem actually is kind of uh, derived, I suppose, from like two months back. So I personally have seen this problem before as well, which is it came up actually in placement seasons of 2021 towards December. In to be precise, Oppo's coding test right the same question was there and then this again came up like in the last week in the 2183 i mean the last contest last last heat code contest the reason why i know that because is like i have solved this particular question as a doubt to some students before so that's why i kind of recognize this immediately and this is there so let's quickly talk about this and like if you are liking the content and the things that we put up on the channels do like and subscribe to the channel and make sure that you comment what you learned right this is something that we follow in this series let's start with the problem so we are given that there is this particular array where there is nums n numbers and k we have to return the number of pairs i comma j such that the product of those two numbers is divisible by k right so this is the whole condition and given this setup like let's say these are the indices pairs right and their product is divisible by 2 so all these pairs have their product a of i into a of j i mean nums of i into nums of j is divisible by k that is given to us so those all count is what we need to find in this case, you, no matter what you product together, you cannot get a multiple of 5. So the answer is 0, right? And the number of numbers is 10 to the power 5. And each of the number and k is also 10 to the power 5. So 10 to the power 5 is the bound. And this is what we need to solve, right? A very simple and interesting problem. Though this numbers of i into numbers of j is what makes it difficult. Okay. There is this uh, simpler version of this particular problem which is number of i plus number of j is divisible by k which is generally solved by hash maps in general for interview purposes but this in product version is much more interesting because it uses some sort of sieve so let's look into how do we kind of go about solving this kind of a problem okay there are two very important learnings do do write them down in the comments once you have found them out okay so let's start first thing we have already done with the reading phase we have different phases if you have not checked out the phase video do check it out what are the different phases in which you should ideally solve a problem let's move into the next observation problem observation part of this observation of the problem or solving it essentially like once we get the observation we have solved the problem essentially so how do we solve the problem uh, it's about finding out the, uh, like uh, decoding this expression k this is the symbol of divides a of i i'm just writing a instead of nums okay into a of j okay just making it simpler we actually have a nums array but it's a of i into a of j the same array is called a as well so when we have when we are given that this is divisible by this let's say uh, we have to find out such pairs right so essentially this is going to be a of i multiplied by a of j when we divide this by k it is going to perfectly give us a remain give leave us a no remainder and will give us some integer let's say some x right something x over here or something over here right now, the way division works is like some factors of this k needs to be like kind of cancelled off out of a of i and some needs to get cancelled off from a of j. Let's let's take an example. Okay, let's say we have 9 multiplied by 16 divided by 6, right? So this is obviously going to give us some number, but the reason we're going to do the, the reason it's getting us a particular number and not leaving out any remainder is because this 6 has a 3 into 2 factor. This 2 cancel off, cancels off with this and gives us 8 over here. And this 3 cancels off with this 9 over here and gives us 3, right? And this 3 into 8 is what we get as a product. But the thing is, the reason why it's getting divided is that out of the denominator that is present, some portion of it is being cancelled off by this number a of i, which is 9 in this case. And some part of it is being cancelled off by a of j, right? So let's try to see. If we have, if we know the value of k, which is given in the problem, by the way, and if we know the value of a of i, can we find out what portion of k is going to get cancelled off by a of i when we divide them, right? And there's going to be some part which is like, which is not, there is no common factor and which will not get cancelled off among them. And there's going to be some factors which are common and we can cancel them off. The best number that we can cancel them off is actually going to be the GCD of the two numbers, GCD of k comma a of i, right? So this is the factor which is common in both of them and it's the greatest common divisor. So we take it out and we divide both of them with that. So it, we can perfectly divide this number with this part and k is also divisible by this number because it's like GCD with the same number. Whatever is left off in the k needs to be like needs to be present in this particular part. So from this we can say that k by GCD of k comma a of i should divide a of j. 
right? Because whatever factors are getting cancelled off in A of I, out of like except that whatever is left in K needs to divide the A of J. Then only it will get cancelled off with A of J, and then you will be left off with no denominator or you will be, you will have no remainder altogether. So this is what should divide A of J. So for a particular A of I, A of if we know A of I, let's say we are iterating on A of I. The possibilities of A of J are nothing but the multiples of this number, right? Whatever are the multiples of this number are the possible values of A of J. Because if it's not a multiple, then we will not get a proper zero remainder, right? When we divide. So that's the essential property that we will use. So now if we try to see how will we actually solve this problem, we will try to find out how many numbers are there. Like first thing is that we can easily find out count a simple count array. So this is formulation plus solving. Like once you have understood this, you should be able to get the clear idea that what we are doing will loop over different a of i's and for a of j's we will try to keep some sort of sieving idea which gives us the number of multiples of a certain number this how many numbers are there which are multiple of this number those are the possible values of a of j simply product and add and these things this is what we do so the way we'll do this is we'll create a count array where count of i array first of all gives the number of a of i which is equal to a of j which is equal to i right count of such a of j's which is equal to i so number of numbers which are equal to i so that we can keep in over here right next we can do is we can build a, a computation which is count 2 of i let's say will give us the number of numbers which are let's say multiple of i right and this we can find using the count one very simply because count of 2 of i is equal like we can simply plus equals to count of j for j equal to 2 into i j is less than 10 to the power 5 j plus plus right this kind of a loop we can write for every i and we can start with the next multiple and add it to this particular number because it's a multiple of that so all of these things will get like uh, accumulated in count two of i. So count two of i basically gives you the number of uh, numbers that is present at a index i, which uh, like how many numbers are there, which are multiple of the number i, right? You can also build this in the same array, like you can drop off this count two and just build it in the same array and using a sim like a for loop of i in the same array itself if you want. But just for clarity, I'm keeping it as count two. The third thing that we can do is now we need to do is for all a of i, like we will loop over the a of i values. We will simply do answer plus equals to the count to okay of we had this expression k by gcd of k comma a of i we will simply divide gcd of k comma a of i so the all the multiples of this part the number of numbers that are multiple of this number are suitable pair with this number right now note that in the actual problem that we had we are given that j is strictly bigger than i so these are some subtleties that you have to handle in a lot of problems that j is bigger than i so you should not pair this like count the same pair so if a of i if k divides a of i into a of i the problem with this is it will get also counted in this particular procedure so we will do answer minus minus right so we don't want to count a of i and a of i's pairs rest all will be counted in this and then there is this one final step, which is some, which if you print for a few samples, you will realize if you, uh, why, why it was kind of counting, double counting the things like it counts I comma J as well as J comma I. So since the way we are doing this, there is no ordering in the objects. So it will count I comma J pair twice, I comma J and J comma I. So finally just print return answer by two. So this is going to be the full formulation that you have in your mind that this is what I'm going to do. And then you can quickly code this up in a code and submit it. Right. So essentially the ideas are very, very simple. The two learnings that you have in this particular problem is related to how do you decompose the expression that we had and how do you kind of build such multiple counts, pre-compute uh, pre these multiple counts so that you can use them again later on for quick multiplication and all. So this is how you can kind of quickly do the things if you want to, but again, the, like there can be more learnings that you might have had in this problem. One more learning that you can have is actually coding tests do contains questions of this level. So do prepare at this particular level. If you want to set if it was for OPPO's, I think uh, it was in camp it IIT KGP campus uh, for OPPO. It was a day to company and uh, in the placement test, this was the second question, I guess. So that was there. Uh, this is about this particular problem. And next, I guess it would be your task to code this up and learn this problem. A fairly good problem on Sieve and a very interesting idea that you should definitely know. 
like let me know what kind of ideas like uh, you found interesting throughout the problems that we have talked about till now what more to cover in these particular series that if you want do like and subscribe to support the channel because i feel a lot of content is going out but like maybe it's not reaching to an ideal audience so if you guys are finding it interesting do let me know about that i would try to create more such content and uh, do let down uh, like type down the learnings that you have done okay so that's all for this particular video thanks for joining in and see you in the next episode bye bye